drop the dollar sign in the chat if you're ready to learn about how to raise money for your business at every level. Again, this slide just shows you that I know what I'm talking about a little bit, and I'm going to walk you through my story while at the same time telling you about how I've done it over 20 years. So it's gonna be like a narrative of my story and how I raise money, which will show you, because I've been in every stage. So this is gonna be great for you. Little quick background about me. I am from Columbus, Ohio. I went to the Ohio State University. I studied journalism and I studied black history. So it wasn't exactly what I'm doing now, but it did help. And then I went to DeVry and studied IT in 2000. So that dates me. You heard me say 2000 I went to DeVry. So again, been in the game for a bit. I got my first job. So I thought because my parents told me and everyone told me growing up that you go to college, get a job, work and retire. So that's really what I was working for in the beginning was just like to get a job. So this is a picture of me very excited to have my very first and last and only corporate job working at Nationwide Insurance. And that's when I got the entrepreneurial itch. And I knew that, you know, working that corporate vibe was not exactly for me. So in 2001, after eight months in my corporate job, crushing it, killing milestones, making $45,000 a year as a 21 year old, I took that leap. And I love this picture because entrepreneurship really is like a free falling leap. Like you just jump and you hope it goes well. You hope you don't hit the ground. And even during all stages of your business, I want you to know that there's always that, that uncertainty all the time. You're always still leaping all the time, but you get used to that butterfly feeling in your stomach and it, it does get easier over the years to have a higher risk tolerance to make that jump. But, you know, my family wasn't really feeling me being an entrepreneur. And so a running joke in my family was that I was like, Tommy, you know, they asked my mom, what does Dawn do? And my mom was like, you know, she's like Tommy, you know, she don't really got no job. And that's because I started a tech company in the very early days of tech where I had an online platform for events and marketing. But this is in the very early days where there's no social media existed yet. Text messaging didn't exist. So my parents and family had no concept that what I was doing was going to be something. And so they just say, you know, Dawn's like Tommy. Nobody knows what Dawn does. And to some people, it could have been discouraging when your family does not have any belief in you and really takes you as a joke. And a lot of times, you know, that happens. The close people to you, sometimes are the last people to believe in you and that's okay because what you will learn is that the help you need the money you need will come maybe not from who you want it to or expect it to but it will come so that's always now and now I'm like hey y'all not calling me Tommy no more because you know what it is but um the first thing that I did you know very first business needed to make money I did something called bootstrapping so I hope before I go deep I want you to grab your notebooks i want you to take notes because i'm going to give you a lot of information pretty quickly so we can stay on schedule so this is going to give you the pros and cons bootstrapping that is you paying for your own business out of your savings asking your friends and family and my most favorite way to raise money is from sales selling a product getting early orders and making money to grow the pros of that you're not in debt you have cash flow right away and it's organic growth because you're getting, you know, using social media, you're using your friends, and then you have control over your business. The cons are sometimes you have to liquidate your personal assets. So for me, when I started my first business, I actually took out a home equity line of credit on my home. I was a homeowner and I used my home and that was my personal asset to get some cash out of this, start my business. Um, a con is you could be cash flow negative. You could go through your own cash fast burn through your own assets quick and then you know you could hit the bottom which by the way I have hit the bottom and I made it back and then you have a shorter runway runway means how much money that you have to run your business so you know you'll say I have a 12 month runway and that means you have enough money in the bank to operate your business for 12 months without making any money runway always means not counting revenue how much money do you have so of course you have a shorter runway a shorter amount of money to burn if you do it yourself and then slower growth because you know a lot of times you need a lot more money to grow but this is just the pros and cons of that so i did this route first i got money from my one family member who believed in me my dad 
um, and I bootstrapped from home equity line of credit, and then I started selling advertisement on my website. And so I did that, and then in 2011, I'm skipping through all my career basically, I started a company called Flat Out of Heels. And I used that same technique of, of bootstrapping and raising money from friends and family in order to raise the first money I needed to create this shoe that this is a picture of me with my very first shoe. I mean, it didn't, it doesn't look that nice, but I did it. I designed it. I got it made in China and I had enough money to get my website going, to get my corporations. And I did that by bootstrapping, but I knew I had to grow my business bigger. So I started looking into more investment. That's where I started tapping into angel investment, which angel investment is accredited individuals. So it can't be friends and family unless they're accredited. Accredited means. They make over $200,000 a year as an individual, $300,000 a year as a married couple, and or a million dollar net worth. This is verified and checked by the SEC, so you have to make sure that they meet this criteria as an angel investor. Um, if you want to look for angel investors, you can go on Angel List, where that logo is, and then Gust. It's the website where you can find and connect with angel investors. The pros, angel investors, they invest because they care. It's heart led. They like you. They believe in what you're doing. They have experience. They want to help. They have more flexible terms, not so sharky terms. They, they want to help and give you information and knowledge. So they may say, you know, angel investing is something they're passionate about. They want to share the expertise. And with angel investors, you have more control over your business still. You're not giving up control. They're not trying to get board seats or voting rights. They really just want to make investments. The cons are they usually write smaller checks. Sometimes angels write $5,000 checks, $10,000 checks, $15,000, $20,000. They're not always sophisticated, meaning a lot of times angels, people with money, don't really understand money and don't really understand investments. They're just like, you know, I got a lot of money sitting around. I'm making six figures a year. I want to invest in something. But they don't really understand how business works. So sometimes it can be stressful and pressure because they don't understand like what's the return like there's not a return on an investment when you're a startup in the beginning the return is when you have a liquidity event so people are like what's the roi and it's like do you ask uber on the stock exchange what's the roi i mean it's it's a it's a risk so teaching them is a thing um it could be a strain it could it could ruin relationships i've certainly um had some strained relationships from taking angel investments because again they didn't really understand how things worked or it didn't go how they wanted it to go also, shorter runway. Once again, they're not writing big checks. So you have to get several of those checks and it doesn't last you that long. Um, and you have to give up equity. So people are like, I don't want to give up any of my company. Well, angel investors want equity. That is their return, having been able to share in whatever liquidity of it that you have. And then it takes time. Angel investors takes a lot of cultivation of relationships, getting to know people, explaining things. And they could take six months to write you a $5,000 check. Now, I've learned not to wait that long, and I've learned how to tell them people are BSing me and when they're really going to invest. But, you know, these are just the pros and cons there. So I was able to raise angel investment money primarily from uh, accredited investors that I knew from college. So these are still from my personal network. And this is where your network is truly your net worth. And I was able to bring my first product, um, create my first vending machine product for Flat Out of Heels to sell in vending machines, which was my goal to sell them in nightclubs and airports when the women's feet hurt. And so this is a picture of me when I first opened up the vending machine. I raised, at this point, I had raised $150,000, uh, angels, and um, got the product made got it out the box and took a picture immediately and posted it on Facebook. So I'm gonna tell you why that you should not do that. This was the outcome of that. So this is uh, the machine in the dumpster. So basically the machine did not work. Um, it looked nice on the picture, of course, and everybody was like, congratulations, you did it. And my investors were excited until they realized that they didn't do anything. They lit up and did not sell anything or did not dispense a product. And so, you know, that's when it became a very challenging time because I raised money, I spent all of the money building this product and I realized I didn't know a lot. And, um, you know, this is what I then say is my beta, right? If a product fails, entrepreneur call it a beta, which beta is your first version and you try 
in this show me the importance of failing forward as you see in this graphic like you're down like i have no money i took all the investor money this shit don't work but then i'm gonna fail forward and and keep going so you know again this is the quote that i love entrepreneur bites off one they can chew and hopes to learn how to chew it very quickly but for me it's like i knew i couldn't keep burning through money i had to get more money because remember all the money was gone i had to get more money but i knew that i needed some help because if i had the proper guidance that wouldn't have happened where i got a machine delivered that didn't work i would have known what questions to ask i would have known you know how to go through this manufacturing cycle so i knew that i needed some mentors and the reason i put this in the fundraising uh, presentation is because mentorship advisors board members are so critical to you really trying to mitigate your risk and make at least mistakes as you can and so there's all pros to having a mentor what i started with was the score program i picked score there's many other mentorship programs but i picked score because it's sba funded and there's literally a score chapter in every single city in america so you literally can go to score and you can get a free mentor and that's what i did after i literally screwed up and messed the bag up the first time i said i can't do this again went to score they helped me build out a financial model they helped me to get a mentor to really model my business out properly and then get a mentor to help me navigate the space of getting hardware manufactured and also importing products from china so again mentorship not only gives you help it builds your network your network of people that you can go to for investment so there's the website go to score.org and i highly recommend it it's free help they do free work and he's a professional so definitely go there so on to the next journey so after i got my mentor got my financial model together i went out and raised more angel investment so people you know i said listen i messed up you know i made some mistakes but I need more money to keep going. And people respect when you're very transparent and honest with them. Investors, they know when you're BSing, you know, and everybody also knows you're not always winning. It's impossible to always be winning and always be right. So for me, my, like, what works all the time for me is to tell people the truth. Listen, I mess up, but I have a plan. I went and got a mentor. Now I have a new manufacturing partner. Now I know what to do. Can you help me? And in 2014, now keep in mind, I started 2011, I was able to get more money and actually build the product that I wanted to build, which you see here, the flat out of heels, a much better and much more improved product, and then the vending machines. But then I learned um, when I was managing these vending machines that I needed to do more and I really wanted to scale the business, which means grow it past, you know, a few venues and selling online and having a few wholesale partners i really needed to grow my business and so i didn't want to go out and give up anything just yet but i needed some money so i started to uh pitch and pitch competitions and i won many of them there's just a few of them but there's again all pros to pitch competitions a lot of times it's free money you don't have to give up any equity and it's immediate cash and i'm going to be honest with you this picture right here of me in the big break power pitch when i did that pitch it's at essence festival once essence festival got into this pitch i had no money i said listen if you don't win this pitch your business is about to shut down because even though i was selling products i had i had payroll i had inventory i wasn't i wasn't getting above i wasn't getting up so i needed a cash infusion that pitch competition saved my business and then these other two here another twenty thousand dollar pitch competition again saved my business and helped me to maintain control of my business so if you want to get in pitch competitions there's a website f6s there's a logo on the bottom f6s.com you can see all the pitch competitions globally everywhere i also recommend using google alerts go to google alerts it's free and put in pitch competition as an alert and it'll alert you every time there's pitch competition that you can sign up for and that's what i did and i literally pitched all over the country i even pitched in japan i pitched anywhere they would have me i would go and this is something that i encourage you to do not only just for money but to warm up your pitch because it's going to be helpful for investors in the future and also team members so 
also to build my network because I knew I needed to scale. I needed millions of dollars at this point. And I wanted to build my vending machine business and I wanted to build some software. So I needed a lot of money. So I started going to conferences and organizations. Here's some of conferences and events and organizations. Um, broad things like CES, South by Southwest, and the Magic Show because I was in the fashion business at the time. Um, Black Enterprise Summit, but also very industry specific. Like for me in retail, the NRF retail show in New York. But whatever your industry is, go to trade shows and events that are specifically for your industry to meet people that can help you directly. Sometimes places like CES and South by Southwest can be very, very overwhelming. And you may not get a lot accomplished because you're competing with all these big companies and very broad range of businesses. So go to very smaller industry specific conferences. Also, use LinkedIn. LinkedIn has helped my business tremendously. Go on there and network and get in LinkedIn groups, all kinds of things you can do um, and be a part of. Join associations. I'm a part of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, you know, you go to the National Black MBA Conference or join association, US Black Chambers, and then use the app Meetup. And all this is so important because however you want to raise money, you need to expand your network. And this is how I did it. I did not come from a rich family. I did not go to Ivy League school. I had to build my network from the ground up. And it, it was from me showing my face everywhere possible to the point where they're like, this girl Dawn is everywhere I go. What does she do? Like, because she just won't go away. And that's how it really has to be. The next thing is I knew I needed more guidance and help to really learn how to build a scalable business. So beyond the mentorship of SCORE, I needed to really get more hands-on um, help. And so I did an accelerator. I did three accelerators, and I did several incubators. The difference is accelerators invest in you. They give you a check. They do take equity. But you have to get into an accelerator that actually aligns with your industry. So I did Techstars, which is one of the top technology accelerators in the country. I also did um, Brink Accelerator in Hong Kong to learn hardware. And then I did a Canopy Boulder Accelerator in Boulder, Colorado to learn about the cannabis business since my company, Popcom, does technology for the cannabis business. So here's several others. There's also incubators and accelerators that you can pay to be in, like New Me, Founder Institute, and then I think Founder Gym as well. You pay for that, but they give you very specific help to accelerate your business and then incubator like the Bixel exchange if you google incubator in your city you will find many if you go to fs6.com you can find accelerators all over the world there are so many when i started my business 20 years ago they did not exist these are new resources for for you at every stage and they will walk you through it so i highly highly recommend looking into these things so i did those things and then i said okay I have a really big idea. After really going through the mentorship program, after going through Techstars, I realized, oh my God, I'm sitting on a hundred million billion dollar idea if I really can scale it correctly with the right team. And so I wanted to go into the software business and build software for vending machines and kiosks using facial recognition and machine learning. And that's a big, crazy, world changing idea. And I needed some millions. It was no longer going to angels. I didn't have time to keep, you know, asking people for $5,000 checks. I needed a bag. So the first thing that really helped me was Techstars because they invested $125,000. Then that started my round and I was able to go and raise that money um, through venture capital investment. So after my first uh, venture capital investment was Canopy Boulder Accelerator and then Techstars. So here's the thing. A lot of people watch Shark Tank and see all these shows and Instagram and think like, I want to raise VC money. First of all, VC money is the hardest to get. It is the most expensive to get because expensive meaning they want more. You know, so even though they give a lot, a lot of people are competing for this money. And it's you have to be highly competitive. And, and I'm going to tell you how to get there. But the pros. Quick cash infusion, you can scale faster. You can grow faster because you're sitting on millions instead of, you know, 100,000 if you can get that, 50,000 from angels. Another pro is VCs bring expertise and networks that are amazing because they want to help the portfolio companies grow. They're going to pull out all of the stops because, again, they want to 
hundred X return. They want you to return their money times a hundred what they put in because they have LPs to answer to. That's limited partners that invest in their fund. So they have to invest this money on behalf of other people on you. And so it's a lot of pressure as well, but their networks are amazing. The cons, this quote, the golden rule is he, he who has the gold makes the rules. They make the rules. A lot of times they want to set your valuation. They want very sharky terms. You've seen Shark Tank. I say sharky term because who wants to give up 50% of their business for $400,000? It's like insane, but it happens every single day. It's a long process. You know, especially somebody like me, didn't have a big network, have to really get to know people. They drag you along. They definitely will BS, um, but it takes long. It's not quick. Um, you give up equity and or debt, uh, debt in the form of equity that converts later, called a convertible note. And then you can lose control. They might say, I want a board seat. And they could come in, have you probably seen people like even Steve Jobs voted out of their company by their board. Um, kicked out of their company, don't have control, get trapped underneath investors where they cannot even see their vision through because the, the investors are working so hard to protect their investment that they often lose sight of the founder's vision. So if you're going to take VC money, you have to be in a certain position. And I'm going to tell you this next and I'll see I got about 10 minutes. So I'm going to get through this. Something that has to be called due diligence. And I say, you know, have your shit together, period. So if you're going to get money from investors at this level, and really I say any level, you have to have all their paperwork in order. I go to this website, dealroom.net. It gives you a due diligence checklist. And that is where you can see everything you need. But always as a business owner, have your paperwork organized. Make sure that you keep your stuff in a cloud, a cloud meaning Google Drive, Box, Dropbox. Wherever you can just drop documents in and keep them securely. I don't want to hear nothing. Nobody wants to hear that your laptop got stolen, your laptop crashed. Have your documents in the cloud. And also, I back myself up on a hard drive. Back your stuff up. Have it organized. Due diligence you're going to want to see. Corporate structure, all your incorporation documents, articles of incorporation, um, tax ID, of course, intellectual property, intellectual property assignment agreements, all your contracts with everyone all your legal stuff together, pending litigation, monthly profit and loss statements, balance sheets, cash flow statements. Now, intellectual property. Make sure that you are protecting your intellectual property. Go, I use in the beginning before I could afford my lawyers, I went to legal Zoom. Legal Zoom, trademark, copyright. I don't think you can do a patent, but you can get your trademark and your copyright. I have two patents pending. That's a little bit of more tedious process, but definitely make sure your IP is in order in that area. But make sure from day one of your business, start a due diligence data room, which means in the cloud, a place where you put every document. Always be ready. Number one. Number two, maybe concurrent. Oh, here's another thing. Boom, there it is. Okay, things that I just said. Uh, data room checklist, boom. Cloud services, boom. Legal and IP. Oh, and if you want to know if your idea is patentable, Go to USPTO, US Patent and Trademark Office.gov and check and see if someone's doing what you're doing to get an idea of is it patentable? Investors, especially venture capital investors, and really everybody wants to invest in something that's unique, proprietary, and that can be patented because you can license that patent and it gives you more um, value. So like I said, I have two patents pending and it's it's been very helpful for me in my business. Um, the next thing is, in concurrent, same time, is a team. I like this quote because, you know, it's basically the best way to get rich quick is to find a group of people who want to get poor quick. And mainly, it's true. In the beginning, you're not making any money. Your team has to come and work with you because they believe in you. But investors must see your team. They value the team over the idea. You could have an amazing idea, but if you don't have the people to execute it, they're not going to believe in you by yourself. No one-man show can go grow a hundred million dollar business. You need a team. And so for me, you know, my team, they quit working at jobs they had before. They, they believed in me for equity, but a big part of my investment money was when they said, who's working with you? If you don't have money to pay people and you're just like, I got a good idea. What you can do is go out and get some advisors. 
And that's what I did. On my first decks, I had me and like five advisors. And the advisors basically signed on and say, listen, I'm advising her. I believe in her. They were credible people in the industry. But, you know, I'm helping guide her. I know she can do this. And they vouch for me. You need somebody to always vouch for you. Never have a deck with just you or a deck with you and you and your co-founder. It's not enough. You need to show investors that some people who know they're talking about believe in you. Get some advisors. But these can be those mentors that you got from SCORE. These could be people from the accelerator program. Those are the people you need to be grooming to advise you when you need advice. So I got all that. 2017, I had raised at this point uh, about a little over a million dollars. Here's my lovely team. They're all with me today still. Um, but this is the team that I show people that, that I got that, the money with, you know, and that's how I raised that money. This was us. Mm -hmm. And that was very important, as I stated. And so next thing they want to see is, all right, what's your traction? What's your MVP, your minimum viable product? This is something very important to know. You don't have to build the whole thing out in the beginning because it may be expensive or it may not work. It may not be what people want. Build the minimum viable product, a book called Lean Startup. The minimum you need to build to show that it works. That's why when you saw those flat outs, they were like flimsy, janky kind of flat outs. But it did show that the shoe worked and people wanted it. Then I had the time to build out a better shoe. Same thing with the bidding machines. Literally, my MVP was this sketch you see right here. It was literally a rendering. I paid a firm to help me map out what I wanted to build so that I could keep iterating and, and didn't spend so much money building something that didn't work. So they're going to want to see your traction. And they're going to want to see MVP. Traction means your progress. They're going to ask you that. If you cannot, um, if you want to build an app or a website or something like that and you can't build it out, get wireframes done. That means a sketch, sketches and graphics of everything that it looks like. So again, I didn't, couldn't build a machine yet. But I had a rendering, and then, as you see, 2018, a year later, I built a fully functional machine. Next thing, think about what the worst thing that could happen, and most of the time, it probably will happen. In my case, you know, um, I built my MVP 2018. I thought I was about to just blow up. But as you see here, that the magic A ball was like, nah, like the cards didn't fall down in my favor at that time. And my machine got stolen by the manufacturer. So, again, I put in a million dollars over the course of a year, venture capital dollars to build this machine. I had paying customers. And then the worst happened, which was my product was stolen. And I didn't have any more money again. Once again, no more money. You see the cycle here? It keeps going. Like ups and downs are insane. No more money. So I had to get creative because, again, I didn't want to go back to these um, investors. First of all, they wasn't fooling with me because they gave me a million dollars and I came back with a stolen product and no revenue. Um, so I had to get creative. And that's when I leveraged my own credit score. So I really encourage you all to do whatever it takes to to get your credit score high and keep it there. You know, I'm not gonna do a credit lesson, I'm sure somebody else will, but this time when my business ran out of money, I used my own credit. It was about 760 at the time, and I got an American Express Platinum card, and I every logo you see on the bottom, I have got money from those places. Shopify Capital, SBA Loans, got that PPP by the way, Lindio, Lending Tree, PayPal Working Capital, Cabbage. I use all of these things. I use every single one of them to get money for my businesses. The pros, they don't take equity. It's very fast if you have good credit, if you have some cash flow coming in the bank. Generally low rates if you have a high credit. If you have low credit, you can still get a sharky deal. There's going to be sharky as heck, and they'll do probably want to take like a money out of your account, like how Shopify does and PayPal does. Um, make small payments. A lot of times your payments are made off of your sales and then it's a fast decision. The cons are it's your personal credit. I mean, so your life can get shut down. If you want to buy a house and you leverage all your credit for your business, you know, it could be high interest. Um, they want you to pay them back now. An investment generally gives you about 10 year cycle on a venture capital investment before they're like, okay, what are you doing? 
But these loans, they get that loan hit the bank, they want a payment next month. So, you know, that's the thing to factor in. Make sure that you don't spend the whole loan right away, then you can't even afford the payment. Um, next thing is they might want to do a rev share. Like I said, they might want to take some of your sales, what you need. And then, of course, it's not scalable. You cannot really grow a business off of credit because of the constant need to repay that credit. However, credit can save you in desperate times. And so during this time, I, it was def desperate times. And um, I couldn't even afford an Uber. You know, I, I, I maxed out all of my credit. I maxed out. I leveraged myself to the limit to the point where I had 10 credit cards and they were all maxed out. And I had to call my friend Dion to call me an Uber in December 2018 because I did not have any more money left again. And so this one, I was like, okay, listen, I got to find another way to raise money. And so this is when I decided I was going to do a crowdfunding campaign because I had IP, I had paying customers, I had a product, even though it was not in my possession, I had an amazing team who never left my side. And more than anything, I had belief in myself that I could do this. And then for me, at this point, being an entrepreneur 17 years, I had an amazing community of support from several states that I lived in. And so I said crowdfunding would be a great thing for me. Equity crowdfunding is where you um, people can invest in your company and they get shares. The other kind of crowdfunding is people can pay for a product up front. So that's like a Kickstarter or Indiegogo. And then equity crowdfunding is things like here that I'm showing you here. Seed Invest, WeFunder, Fundable, Circle Up, Republic, and Start Engine. I use Start Engine. The pros are anyone can invest, accredited, non-accredited. You can have very low minimums, right? The minimum was $250 to invest. That's very easy to do. You can raise money globally. You can raise money on your terms. You can do a ref share or give up equity. So I didn't mention that. You can do a ref share, which I don't recommend, or equity. And then you can do, like I said, pre-sales. The cons, it, it, there are high fees. It is expensive to live on these platforms. There's a platform fee. There's due diligence fees. Um, they also want some equity or pay a $10,000 fee in many cases. And then you have to have a good network. You have to have a strong network to be able to raise money in the beginning because the first about two weeks of the campaign will show you if they're going to last. If you can't raise any money from your immediate friends and family or network, strangers will not invest. And then lastly, VCs do not like crowdfunding because they feel like you're taking their control out of their hands. They usually have the ones with the money. But when you start letting everyday people invest, we start empowering people to be investors. They don't like that shit. They want to control everything. And so I'm always the outlier. So I said, okay, I'm about to go against the grain and I'm going to crowdfund. And it worked out. Long story short, last year, I became the first female founder um, in the world to raise over a million dollars in a crowdfunding campaign, equity crowdfunding campaign, in a secure token offering. So, you know, I walked away from, so let me say this. When I started raising money, then the VCs came back I was, after I raised like a half a million. Like, oh, we'll invest. We'll give you some money and you can claw back your shares. Give us, you know. Third, it wanted to get me down from over 50% of my business to 30% in one round. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. So I walked away from BC. I said, you know what? I have a bomb community behind me. I was able to get on the Breakfast Club. That went crazy. I was able to get on the Karen Hunter Show. That went crazy. Black Enterprise, Forbes, Fast Company. And, you know, the community really rallied behind my business and we raised this money. Then right after that, immediately after that, I raised another angel round. And so I raised a total last year of $1.3 million in 2019 alone, which then allowed me to build a scalable product. And so what you see here is my pop shop. Um, it is the vending machine that I was able to build with, of course, the investment that I got last year. And then 2020, we launched it to the public and at, at CES NRF show. And so after all the bumps in the road, after raising money and pitch competitions and maxing my credit out, which by the way, my credit is back in the 700s and I paid all of my debt off. But, you know, putting it all on the line and doing everything possible to keep my business going, I was able to get to where I am today with the scalable product. But then of course you always need more money. That's the thing about business. And so I'm gonna end this part of my presentation before I go to questions is that, I'm currently raising another round of money 
to grow my business and offer my my product to more retailers. So as of today, we're at six hundred and ninety thousand dollars. That was a screenshot from yesterday. So today we're at six hundred and ninety thousand dollars and another goal of a million, which I feel very confident that we'll get to. Anybody can invest. Ask yourself this before you start raising money. How far do you want to go? Some people want to keep a business and keep it in their family. Don't raise venture capital. They want their money back. They want you to sell. You know, so if you want to keep your business and grow it and keep it in the family, look at other ways to raise money. What is your burn rate? That means how much money are you spending every month? You need to make sure that you have enough in the bank to burn for 12 months. So my burn rate is probably about $80,000 a month. So I have to make sure that I have enough money in the bank for $80,000 a month for 12 months at all times. How much are you willing to give up? How much equity are you willing to give up? That's going to determine what you raise. If you don't want to give up a lot, don't go venture capital route. Go crowdfunding route, go pitch competition route, go angel investment route. And then what are your projections? Come up with at least a three-year financial projection so you can understand how you're going to pay this money back. People want their money back. That doesn't mean it's a loan, but it means a liquidity event. Are you going to exit? Are you going to do a merge? Are you going to IPO? Are you going to pay dividends? How are they going to get their money back? Figure that out. And then my last piece, find your why. Like, what would you do if money didn't matter? Because there's a point in your business where you're not making any money. And if you can get up and still do something every day when you're not making any money, that means you love it. I told you I was broke. I, I wasn't broke spiritually, mentally. I had no cash. So I said I had low cash. Um, but I, I got up every day and I did it because I loved it and I believed in it. And then trust yourself. Trust that instinct that you have. Don't just take money to take money. Don't take money in desperation. Don't just take any deals. You know more than you think you do. And also believe you're the best person to do this idea. It was given to you because it's for you. Never worry about anybody stealing your idea. Nobody can steal your idea. It's your idea. They can try to do something like what you're doing, but they cannot steal your idea. Don't be scared to share it because it cannot be stolen. No one can do what you do, how you do it. Here's some books. Screenshot these books on my favorite books um, just from business and, and personal life. Please screenshot that. I want to get to some questions. And we're still basically on time despite technical difficulties. And so that is the end of it. I'm going to go to Q&A. Let me get back to the chat room. And I can just stop sharing my screen now since it's kind of janky. And yeah, ask me questions. So I'm looking in the chat. And um, let me go to the event chat. And then if I miss something, Matthew, please let me know if something that was really good that stuck out. I will. I posted the books. Oh, last thing. There is a, I, I have my slides for you all to look at them. I'm going to drop a link for you to go look at my slides and all the books are there. So I'm going to drop it in the chat right here. That is a link to my presentation. So feel free to go look at my presentation whenever you want. So did that post, did that show up? There it um, is. There's the link under my name. Uh, there's the link. You can click on that link and get access. Um, I can put the book list back up. They asked me to stick it back up. I'll share my screen again. It's a little, it's a little janky looking screen here, but there you go. It looks good on our end. Okay, good. So viewing it looks good. So there's the books and then here's me, I'm back. So any more questions? A question that came up, Don, was from Dominique Alexandria, and she asked, are there stock options? So that's what equity means. Um, so equity is a, a stock shares in your business. Um, when I think of the word stock options, I think of what's called an employee stock option pool. When you start a business um, and you are bringing on team members, you should have an employee stock option pool. It's also called an ESOP. And that allows your team members to get to earn equity in your business over time. It's called vested equity. You give them, let's say, 1% vested over three years. That's stock options. But as far as um, you know, crowdfunding, yes, equity. Angels, they get equity. Um, uh, uh, accelerators, they take equity. And the other forms that I showed you do not take equity. But yes, equity means stock. But it's not necessarily called stock because it's not publicly traded. 
even what I'm doing now is called private equity. So I am selling private equity on a public market on Start Engine. It's a new law that became came into effect called the Jobs Act, J-O-B-S, Jumpstart Our Business Startups, signed in 2012 by Obama. It allows you to raise money from the crowd. And so that is private equity sold publicly. So those are essentially stocks, but not they're not no ticker symbol. They're not on the NASDAQ. They're not on the New York Stock Exchange. And you cannot trade them. So they're not stock. Incredible. Any more questions? A question that came in from um, Ms. Kenny Tate was, for the manufacturer that was able to compromise your product, did they get away with compromising the product? Or how did you respond to that? Yeah, they got away with stealing the physical hardware. They cannot steal my intellectual property because I have my patent filed already and I have my trademarks in place. So they stole my actual physical product. They held it hostage. They were trying to get more money out of me. And they still to this day have it. They still have it. However, the intellectual property belongs to my company. So therefore, they cannot go reproduce it. They cannot go sell it. They can just try to hold me hostage, but they couldn't because I just walked away from it. I said, you know what? Keep it. I'm going to build it over again with a better company that can really help me grow. So it was a hard lesson because I spent $50,000 that I never got, but they wanted me to give them another $40,000 to get it back, which was outside of the scope of our agreement. And you will learn sometimes working with third party um, consultants and contractors, they can do shady things. That's where it's so important to read every single line of every contract and also very important to think about what's the worst that could happen and write into the contract provisions to protect you against that. They were my friends. So I never imagined they would steal my products. But when they saw how much money I raised, they looked at it like, oh, she got a million dollars. Yes, I raised a million dollars for my business. It's not mine. And it's also allocated. So I didn't just have money to just pour into everything. So again, protect yourself. Also have a, a great attorney on deck at all times. That's Someone right. said, because what is my why? My why is, is my daughter and building, you know, generational wealth. And, you know, um, my, my first why was just putting all my bills on auto pay because I was living like real check to check and deciding, should I turn on, should I pay the electric bill? I got 30 days. Should I pay this bill? So my first why was like, I just want to get all my bills on auto pay. And then I did that. And then I said, now I just want to build generational wealth. And then now I want to empower my community and build wealth in my community because I know that the real way to uh, generate wealth, as you heard Chris talking about, is knowing how to leverage money and do investments. And so that's why I opened my business to the public and continue to do that. Even though now I can take VC money very easily, I still raise money from the public. A question that came in, and this will probably this will be our final question for today from Jayla Satterfield. I wanted to call out this question from Jayla because this is a question that no matter where you are level wise, no matter what it is you're doing, it's a great question. The question she asked was, did you use a patent attorney or file the paperwork yourself? And if you use a patent attorney, how did you make sure you chose the right one? That's a phenomenal question because I chose the wrong one at first. And so the first thing that I had to do, that's how patents work. You get an idea. You file a provisional patent which is not that expensive. So I had an attorney file the provisional patent, sketch up the idea. That gives you one year because it keeps it private. It gives you one year to create an MVP or bring it to market. So that means you're the first to bring the idea up. Don't wait until it's built to file the patent. File the patent right away. You have a year to build it. So I had an attorney. I hired a firm, but they didn't specialize in patents, in patents and trademarks. They had a patent and trademark division of a larger firm. And so what happened was they weren't that good and they didn't guide me correctly on writing my patent in a way that it would go through the process easier with the patent and trademark office and with the patent examiner. So when I filed it, the examiner came back with a lot of things like somebody else is doing something similar. Can you address this? So now I have a patent attorney specifically, and they help me write the new patent where it is going to basically foresee what the examiner wants to hear. So I have two patents pending still and waiting for them to get approved. But I highly recommend um, getting a patent attorney. Now, the provisional patent is probably like $2,000.
But the full pattern price is about 20000 And that's where I'm at with it so far, about 20000 So it does take money and time. Yeah. Yeah. Don, so amazing. So, so, so amazing. Thank some you. real information for some real folks who simply want this information or need this information. Uh, so it's crazy, too. We talk, talk about the $28 that folks pay. If you brought somebody on, it was $20. If you bless somebody, you paid more yesterday, you know, to bring them on because maybe they didn't afford it. But this is the information that many people are knocking down doors to get. You know what I mean? Like this is real information from real folks who've already done the real work. So, you know, from the bottom of my heart, and I think that I can speak on the on, on behalf of Steve and Speck and, and everyone else, thank you so much for the tire, the, the selfless presentation today. It was truly selfless. So thank you very much. Can I close something I said? Closing statement? Yes. If you want to support my company, go to startengine.com forward slash popcom and just check it out. And also use that as a template to understand what investors need to see. I've done it very well and it will be a guide for you. So thank you all for joining us and, you know, keep getting these good nuggets from everybody for the rest of the day. And I'll see you guys later.